We're in Copenhagen, we're at DTW Ignite 2024, the annual TM Forum event. I'm here with Nastasi Karaiskos, who is MD of Rakuten Symphony UK. Nastasi, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. It's great to see you, Ray. It's great to be back here at DTW Copenhagen. Well, you know, at this event, uh, every year, essentially everybody comes together and the big talking points are, what are the big challenges for this industry? So. Um, let's get your perspective on that. For, for, the, for the network operators, the communication service providers, what are the biggest challenges facing those companies today? We love to get together to talk about uh, the challenges in the industry. I think, um, first of all, this event, how I've seen this event evolve over the years, is it traditionally was focused on OSS and quite heavily on the IT side. And we see this happening generally in the industry, how IT and networks are coming closer together. And this event has evolved in that way as well. So the people that you have coming here um, from an operator perspective, as well as the vendors who are here to sort of talk and help solve those challenges, um, often uh, taking that conversation of, of merging the IT aspects of OSS and BSS with the network side as well. And it's great to see that because this is one of the significant challenges. Typically operators have been siloed with these internal departments, they haven't discussed or talked to each other. And we've ended up with um, a situation with multiple different systems, siloed systems uh, that do not interact, do not talk to each other, heavy on the manual process side. And we're trying to fix that as an industry now as we move towards autonomous networks and with the early adoption of AI um, solving some of those manual processes. Rightly, there's a lot of talk uh, at this event as well about business outcomes and serving the customer. But at the end of the day, a lot of that comes from the implementation of the right technologies. Um, what kind of solutions can the network operators do deploy to help them get from their legacy past to uh, the digital here and now? The journey towards efficiencies and automation, automation has to be done in layers. It's not a, a complete um, you know, rip and replace. Uh, some of the areas that we find uh, operators are asking for um, support in, that they are typically heavily uh, reliant on manual processes, are things like uh, site acceptance. So they're deploying new sites around their network. Um, there's so many people and so many stages throughout that process involved. Um, passing of paper, emails, for example, and it's taking a long time. So um, we look at what we uh, achieved in uh, Japan. So in Japan at our peak, when we built the Rakuten mobile network, we were deploying somewhere between six to 800 sites a day, almost with zero touch provisioning. I heard one operator tell me today they'd be lucky if they brought that many sites up in a decade. And they were joking, but it's not far from the reality because it's such a slow, heavy process. And it doesn't need to be. With the right tools, with the right applications, you can completely automate the site planning and acceptance when you're pl planning out new sites, whether it's rolling out 5G or, or, emerge, uh, or rolling out into new uh, areas. Um, we use drone technology, for example, um, the, to, to look at exactly how the sites have been built, um, are the components uh, um, built and connected in the right way, um, and you basically will not get a green light for that site acceptance unless all of these areas in, have been, uh, the components have been put together in the right way. Everything from the adjustment, the tightness of each bolt, for example, how it's been put together, the health and safety aspect of the engineer who's on site themselves, are they wearing the right gloves, the right helmet, for example. This can all be done on one screen, not a laptop or anything like that. It's automatically uploaded. Once it's gone green, the site will be brought uh, into live in, and commissioned. And how can Rakuten Symphony work with the, the network operators uh, to help them make this transition and, and sort of, you know, help them get to the next stage of their evolution? So our, our OSS platform uh, covers a number of different modules uh, from an operation uh, perspective, uh, from planning and building uh, to operating and maintaining the network. Um, it's vendor agnostic, it's cloud and RAN agnostic. So this isn't just for an open RAN network. This can be deployed on whichever uh, hardware uh, vendor they are using. And we have deployed this on, on all of the, the major uh, RAN providers. We typically look to start small and it's either solving a challenge where they have multiple systems that are not talking to each other and our platform is deployed as an umbrella system to bring those together or potentially to reduce the number of apps and tools that they have 
or it's to go in and bring new automation and efficiencies in by replacing one of the existing uh, tools that they've got. So we typically look to start somewhere very, very small, very, uh, you know, avoiding any kind of disruption, um, not particularly huge costs either. We know costs and budgets are expensive to prove that the model works. And if you can prove on a very short, small number of, of sites that automation is, is introduced and you've gone from 80% manual uh, uh, work to 20%, on 100 sites, it gives you a very nice business case for the operator to then say, if we roll this out across 1,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 of our sites, we should expect to see the same. And then all of those people that were doing those manual processes can be redeployed or they can focus on more critical needs and solve these easier, easier problems for them. Now, of course, um, here and uh, in pretty much any conversation in this industry, AI is a, is a really hot topic. Uh, how do you think AI can transform the, the telecom sector? So I personally think that um, the telecoms industry will be one of the biggest industries to benefit from uh, AI. And we've already started to see this in our uh, Rakuten mobile deployment. Um, so maybe two examples that I would share. Using AI to predict and identify potential faults that might arise in the network and preventing them before they happen. Um, I think we would, we, would, we would all agree that this is, this is a great saving of time, but also then the impact it has on a customer. Fewer outages, fewer disruptions within the network. Then on the other side, I would think about how you can use, we are using AI to uh, predict churn. For example, if there is an unhappy customer, maybe they've, uh, they've complained maybe about a specific area or they're not happy about a service, they're coming towards the end of their contract and they're at high risk of churning, maybe they don't take multiple products from you. We can see this, we can identify this potential risk of churn in advance, um, uh, approach the customer to address maybe some of their concerns that they've had, um, turn them back into a green light, a happy customer again, and avoid that churning customer. So these are two areas that we see as two uh, you know, particularly big impacts um, uh, that AI is helping. And then this insightful data that we uh, see and gather in our network, we can then use AI to offer personalized experience that are unique for that customer based on their own uh, algorithms that they're generating, uh, products that they might be specifically interested in. So it's not a general blanket promotion across all of the subscriber base. They're getting bespoke promotions specifically for them, for their own interests. If they're a coffee drinker, they're getting a promotion for coffee. If they're a wine drinker, it's maybe something for wine. And we've seen that this, this personalization can really, really help in, improve customer loyalty and customer stickiness. I mean, at, at a bigger, broader, level, um, what can the rest of the industry learn from what Rakuten Mobile has done in the past four years and, and how it has sort of operated and behaved and, and built itself out in, in, a, in a different way? So it's, it's not lost on us that, you know, we started this journey into telecoms as a greenfield operator. And I think, you know, when you're starting off with a blank piece of paper, of course, it makes sense to, to choose um, the latest technology and the technology that is being used more and more, you know, in the future. And this is technology that is, you know, built around uh, automation, the cloud, uh, and uh, and AI, of course. Um, but for the vast majority of the industry, this isn't a luxury that they might have. However, the journey that we took and this rapid speed that we achieved to, to, to build the network, we did gain a lot. And it wasn't easy, it was a great challenge, and we learned, uh, you know, we, we, we fixed many, many, we overcame many challenges during that journey. And we want to share these experiences with the operators as they start their journey, layering into this transformation, which they've all now, I think, openly accepted this is, this is what needs to be done. Um, what we often see as, as uh, it comes up in the discussion is not necessarily an agreement of, yes, that we have to do something, but it's where should we start that's going to have the biggest impact. Um, and that's, that's where we try to lend our experience to help the operators as the software vendor as Rakuten Symphony, uh, where you can start, we'll identify where the biggest impact um, on this journey towards automation, a, a beneficial impact it's gonna have for them. And we'll try and prove the model works uh, in a very small, low impactful way. Well, I mean, there's no doubt that, you know, the, the, the rest of the industry is always very interested in what Rakuten Mobile has done, what it's doing uh, and how it's operating. It's, uh, you know, it's a company that a lot of people talk about in, in the industry. So I'm sure you'll have plenty of conversations here at DTW and at other industry events in the future. Nastasi, 
thanks so much for joining us. Great to see you. Thank you, Ray. Thank you.